You're listening to Tim Bolkley's 5-Minute Bible. This podcast should be the last of the boring stuff for a while. I'm going to lead you through a brief classification of some of the genres of poetry that we find in Scripture. After this, we'll get on to how some of these genres actually work in practice. Much more fun. Biblical poetry tends to get divided into two main branches. Poems and songs. We'll look at the songs first, because they're the biggest branch. There are three main kinds of song in Scripture. By far and away the biggest group are the Psalms, in the Book of Psalms and elsewhere. But there are also other kinds of songs found in narratives, and there are love songs. Let's look at the Psalms first. I've grouped the Psalms in four main sorts. You can use other numbers for your classification, dividing things up even smaller. You'll notice I've put laments and complaints together. This strikes me as a division which is useful and simple. Let's take those laments and complaints first. There's quite a bit of debate over what exactly you call them, but all of these psalms, whatever you call them, are responses to a perceived wrongness in the world. In some of them the focus is on complaining, in some the focus is on appealing for help, and in some the focus is on confessing one's own sin, which is the wrongness perceived in the world. So psalms that perceive a wrongness in the world. Another major category of psalms, learnt and complaints being the biggest, are the hymns. Hymns aren't old worship songs with lots of verses. They are psalms that proclaim God's glory and just do that. They don't focus on thanking God for the good things he's given us, but simply proclaiming how great and wonderful God is. And more than most of the other kinds of psalms, hymns have a standard form. They begin with either a call to praise, let us worship the Lord, or an announcement of praise, I will praise Yahweh. The call may go on for several verses, or it may just be a line, or something in between. It's joined to the body of the psalm by a conjunction, for or because, and what follows is almost entirely, almost always, the reasons for praising Yahweh. Another big category of psalms are the thanksgivings. These are psalms that thank God for what he's done. You also find bits of thanksgiving in psalms of other genre, and that's true of laments or complaints, and even of uh, praise too. But psalms which are predominantly about thanksgiving make a useful separate category. And then there's the grab bag, wisdom psalms, royal psalms, Zion psalms, and a whole load of other small categories with just a few psalms each. As I said, you can make your classification more complicated, but this one is fairly simple and fairly convenient. Now, about those love songs. There's one book of love songs, the Song of Solomon, and there's a parody love song in Isaiah 5. The prophets often do that. They take a genre which works differently, and they twist it somehow. We'll come back to that when we talk about the prophets. And then there's the songs in narrative. There are two main kinds of these. Singing the story and singing in the story are the way I think of them. There are usually longer songs, though sometimes they're very short, that celebrate the story. Some of the best known long examples are the celebration of the Exodus in chapter 15, in song by Miriam and Moses, after we've heard the story of the Exodus in chapter 14. In Deuteronomy 32, the song of Moses, we get a celebration of all that God has done for his people. The story so far. Judges 5 celebrates the story that we read in Judges 4. But there are also shorter songs that appear as part of the action of the story. So some of the characters will sing work songs or war songs or whatever. So singing the story, celebrating the story that's been told, and singing in the story. People in the story who sing. As well as songs though, there are poems and these are of two main kinds, prophecy and wisdom. The prophets used poetry. Indeed, there are many scholars nowadays who speak of the prophets as poets, or at least of the people who wrote the prophetic books as poets. I don't want to get into that debate. What I want to notice is that the prophets regularly take and adopt appropriate genre to express their message, but they often use them in interesting ways. Laments the singing of a dirge over uh, someone who's dead, they take and use in a fairly appropriate way, but 
they are doing it to imagine someone who is alive or the whole nation as if they were dead but on other occasions they'll deform the genre even more Amos for example takes the genre of the instruction a priest would give in ritual duties and he takes it and twists it to hammer home his message variety and ingenuity are the spice of prophecy and that's why, or one of the reasons why, so much prophecy is poetry in wisdom there are both longer wisdom poems and there are short sayings proverbs for example, like the ones in Proverbs 10 following are short poetic sayings but there are also wisdom poems like those in Proverbs 1-9 to and in the case of the book of Job the poems in the bulk of the book the speeches of Job and his friends become almost like a play that explores the themes of the book Ecclesiastes is in some way similar though it's a bit more dubious whether it is or isn't poetry and it's a bit less clear exactly what Ecclesiastes is doing readers of the book really have to think and in that way it's just like poetry so we've explored the two main branches what about that little branch off to the right blessings are also usually in poetry so that's the picture bye for now <laughs>